This pair of kestrels are known as Mr. and Mrs. Kez. They're looking for the perfect place to bring up chicks. Last year they nested in Sycamore Stump, successfully raising six chicks that fledged last July. But since then, barn owls, willow and ghost have taken over the site. The kestrels need to find somewhere else. Soon the prospect in the ash stump nest. The pair nested here two years ago, but it wasn't easy. They had problems with barn owls, jackdaws and tawny owls. They'll think twice before choosing this nest again. Another option is beach stump. The pair arrived to investigate. Mr. Katz heads in first. Mrs. Kez wants a look too. She's intrigued by the cameras and even begins to nest scrape, checking if the nest floor is suitable for eggs. They seem to like this spot and soon they mate just outside. But the kestrels aren't the only ones that are interested. The tawny owls and the barn owls are both visiting this nest too. So I'm going to renovate Ashton to give the kestrels another option. There's so much competition for nest sites out there, so I'm giving the kestrels a helping hand. This is actually going to be a baffle that I'm going to put in ash stump, and this will exclude the bigger birds, like the tawny owls just going in and grabbing the kestrels, and the little kestrels will be able to hop over the top. In the morning, Mr. Kez is the first to visit. And then Mrs. Kez takes a look too. They seem to like the changes. That night, Tawny Owl Bomber tries to enter, but can't get past the baffle. It's clear my handiwork has done its job. It's mid-February and the Kestrels have decided on this nest. Now they can focus on courtship. The male must impress the female by providing food. These food passes are an important part of courtship, proving the male can provide for the female and the chicks. They take it in turns to scrape the nest floor. Forming a shallow depression in preparation for eggs. As well as some essential maintenance. By mid-March, Mrs. Kez is guarding the nest by day and at night. A sure sign she's going to lay soon. It 
In the morning, Mrs. Kes heads inside. She tidies the nest carefully. And when her work's complete, she settles down. She breathes heavily. And within moments, her first egg is revealed. Kestrels lay at two day intervals and can have between three and seven eggs. These eggs are incubated right away. Brooding typically starts when half the clutch is laid. Over the next four days, she lays a second. And third egg. As April arrives, unseasonal storms sweep the Yorkshire countryside. The pair are vigilant, perfectly timing their changeovers to ensure their eggs don't get cold. And as the snow melts, Mrs. Kez continues to lay. She soon reveals egg four. Five. And then six. Until finally, their clutch is complete. This experienced pair have been together three years now. It's a joy to see them with another clutch of eggs. In just a month's time, their chicks will hatch. And I can't wait to watch this pair step up to the challenge once again. This is the pair's third season together. And Mrs. Kez knows just how she likes to keep her nest. She carefully brings soft wood chippings into the centre to provide a cushioned base for her eggs. She's particularly protective. In previous years, she's fought off numerous attacks. And this year is no different. As Mrs. Kez sleeps, she hears a noise outside. Ban Al Finn lands at the entrance, but soon takes flight. The Ban Owls haven't laid eggs yet and are checking out potential sites. Finn's mate Gilfie follows. Mrs. Kez leaps up, defending her precious clutch. and holds her position even after the threat has passed. The eggs are unharmed, but she seems rattled by the attack. And the danger doesn't end here. The following day, Mrs. Kez hears disturbance outside. This time it's a pair of jackdaws prospecting nests. 
They're a real threat. They block neighboring Tornia or Luna inside. <coughs> Mrs. Kez heads in, but the Corvids are curious, landing at her nest too. As one tries to enter, she quickly sees it off. But over the following days, the jackdaws are persistent. They're visiting the nest multiple times a day. And Mrs. Kez seems visibly stressed. Until finally, Mr. Kez swoops in, putting an end to the trouble. It's now the end of April, just a few days before the chicks should hatch. Both kestrels make their final preparations. But when Mrs. Kez heads out to stretch her wings, a spotter being harassed by a red kite. She's soon back at the nest. She just can't seem to catch a break. As night falls, she senses another threat. Tawny Owl Luna lands at the nest. Luna's got chicks nearby and she's highly territorial. Mrs. Kes doesn't want to fight as Tawny Owls are formidable opponents. But as Luna tries to enter, Mrs. Kes lunges. She'll do anything to protect her eggs. At the start of May, their troubles seem to be over. The kestrels have been taking it in turns to incubate for 30 days. But now I've noticed Mr. Kez has bowed out of this role. Once the eggs hatch, he'll be in charge of bringing in food, while his mate cares for their young. His lack of brooding is a sign that the chicks are on the way. Mrs. Kez broods the eggs closely. And soon we get a glimpse of the first chick. Kestrel eggs are laid at two to three day intervals. But as they're not brooded straight away, the chicks hatch much closer together. The second chick hatches only an hour and a half after the first. Soon Mrs. Kez leaves the nest. And Mr. Kez sees his chicks for the first time. His mate soon returns and he sets off to find food. Mr. Kez picks up a mouse from the feeding post where I leave supplement food. He delivers the food to his mate. She carefully feeds the chicks.
It's amazing to see how well they work together. In the afternoon, Mrs. Kez reveals a third chick, still damp. And when she leaves the nest in the evening, her fourth chick has hatched too. As night falls, there are only two eggs still to hatch. It's been a busy day. The next morning, Mrs. Kez wakes up early to feed the chicks. And soon reveals the fifth. And finally, the following evening, the sixth and final chick hatches too. This Kestrel family is now complete, and I can't wait to see how they get on. This is Mrs. Kez, a female Kestrel brooding six chicks. They're just a couple of days old, and they've got a lot of growing to do. But for Mrs. Kez, incubation wasn't easy. She battled barn owls, jackdaws, tawny owls, and even a red kite. And thanks to her determination, she's now got a healthy brood. She tears prey into small pieces and carefully feeds each chick in turn. While a female kestrel feeds the chicks, the male's main role is to provide for the family. Her mate, Mr. Kez, arrives and drops off his catch. The pair make a great team. But over the next few days, Mrs. Kez doesn't seem herself. She's an experienced mother, but now she's restless. And she's leaving the nest more often than she should. Leaving her tiny chicks unprotected and at risk of getting cold. She seems on edge, and even at night, she's not sleeping well. The next day, she leaves the nest again. It's just not normal behaviour for her. She's back and she's calling as if she's sensed a threat. It could be the barn owls nesting nearby. Or tawny owls, Bomber and Luna, roosting in the trees with the fledglings. But whatever it is, something isn't quite right. As night falls, the atmosphere changes. Mrs. Kez hears the tawny owls calling outside. The tawnies have two chicks that have only just fledged, so they're really protective. Luna the female leaves and lands at the kestrel nest. Mrs. Kez tenses up, and as the tawny owl tries to enter, she lunges. The threat is over, for now. A couple of nights later, Mrs. Kez wakes. 
Kestrel struggles to see in the dark, but she senses something outside. She heads out, leaving her chicks alone in the nest. When she returns, she seems rattled and falls from the entrance. She eventually lands, but the ordeal isn't over yet. Tawny Owl Luna takes off towards the Kestrel's nest. And Mrs. Kez nearly falls out as she scrambles to defend herself. The Tawny Owl lands on the camera, but soon takes off. She can't see the threat in the darkness, but she knows it's there. The Kestrel returns to the chicks. But 10 minutes later, just after midnight, she heads out again. And disappears into the night. Leaving the chicks completely alone. By morning, Mrs. Kez hasn't returned, and the chicks are calling desperately. Just after 5am, Mr. Kez arrives. After a night alone, the chicks are cold and hungry, but the male has brought food and drops a vole down for them. Although he's equipped to provide for the chicks, he's got no idea how to feed them. They haven't been fed in over 12 hours, and if they don't eat soon, they'll die. Mr. Kez keeps returning with more prey, and the chicks are getting more and more desperate. One of the chicks tries to eat, but they can't feed themselves. I decide it's time to intervene. So Mrs. Kez left the nest at midnight just after a confrontation with the tawny owls. And it's 10 o'clock in the morning now and she still isn't back and the chicks are getting cold. carefully open up the nest so I can assess the chicks. They're starving so I gently feed them by hand. The nest is full of mice and voles and the female would have fed them all of this by now. So these chicks are really hungry and there seems to be three that are doing quite well and still quite strong uh, but there's some that are getting quite weak in here so I think I'm going to have to take them out. I carefully lift the chicks from the nest so I can take them for a more thorough health check. So the last thing I wanted to do was to take these chicks out of the nest, but some of them are really struggling now. So I've had to take them out and I'm just going to do a quick health check on each one and see which ones I might need to keep out of the nest today and get warm straight away. So this one's fed really well down in the nest. You can see it's got a full crop here. And then we've got some smaller ones here that are clearly struggling. Yeah, that one hasn't taken any food. And this little tiny one here. It's still quite warm, but I can feel on the wingtips it's getting quite cold. So we need to keep that one in. So 
So after a health check of these kestrels, I'm going to keep three with me here on a heat mat and I'm going to try three back down in the nest in the hope that the female kestrel returns. So I've prepared a heat mat up in the nest and I've got the three bigger chicks here and they're nice and warm and well fed. So I'm going to try them back in the nest. It's really important if the female does return that there's chicks in here. Otherwise she might abandon this nest. So I've just got to cross my fingers now. Mrs. Kez is out there somewhere and comes back during the day. Now it's time to check upon the three smaller chicks that have been warming up in my studio. So I've had these chicks in now a couple of hours and warming them up. These two are having their second feed and the little one's just woken up and is ready for its first feed. There we go. So it's amazing to see this little one now. It was really cold when I first got it in and not moving much at all, but I've warmed it up now and look at it begging for food. Absolutely superb. Meanwhile, back at the nest, the three oldest chicks are huddling up for warmth. It's only been 10 minutes since I returned them to the nest and Mr. Kez wastes no time in coming back to them. He's brought even more food. But when they won't take it, his instincts kick in. He tries to brood them, usually the role of the female. It's remarkable to watch, but you can tell he's not used to this. And with no sign of Mrs. Kez returning, I'll be keeping a close eye to see how he gets on as a lone parent. Female kestrels are the primary caregivers for the chicks, keeping them warm and tidbit feeding them. And with her gone, the male just doesn't know how to fill this role. He's unsettled and heads out, as if looking for his lost mate. He returns to the nest with a vole and the young kestrels call frantically. He shunts a rodent close to the chicks, but he makes no effort to tear it up for them. They're starving. They're still far too small to feed themselves, but they're trying. And Mr. Kez still isn't getting the message. <laughs> Meanwhile, up in my studio, it's time to feed the smallest chicks again. I've only had them in with me for a few hours, but they're already looking so much better. I'm really hoping I can get these chicks back into the wild. I've just got to hope Mr. Kez learns how to feed those chicks. Back at the nest, Mr. Kez returns with another vole. And when they don't take it, he starts tearing it up and offering them smaller morsels. This is an encouraging start. He's realised they're hungry. But he's impatient. He hasn't quite mastered it yet. In the afternoon, I head down to feed the chicks myself.
They haven't had a meal since I took them out this morning, so they're really hungry. I'm careful not to give them too much. I still want them to call for food. And I don't stay long. I don't want to put Mr. Kez off. I leave, and it's soon back to the chicks. He broods them, but he's restless. He just can't seem to get comfortable. At the entrance, he calls for his mate. It's tough to watch. As he flies off, the chicks are alone once again. But at dusk, Mrs. Kez miraculously returns. The chicks perk up as they hear her outside. She's been gone over 20 hours, but she doesn't enter the nest. And when a tawny owl calls, she bolts off. It's such unusual behaviour. In previous years, she's taken on any threats to protect her own. Without their mother to brood them overnight, they're vulnerable to predators and could die if they get cold. As darkness falls, there's no sign of the male either. So I collect the chicks from the nest. They'll be safer with me overnight. So it's 5am in the morning and I've got the three biggest Kestrel chicks with me. So I'm heading down to the nest now and just hoping Mrs. Kes comes back today. It's only 20 minutes before the male returns with the vole. The chicks don't immediately grab it, and he looks a bit unsure. He settles for the safe option, brooding again. He seems confident with this task now. Later, Mr. Kes comes in with a special catch, a lizard. The lizard is thinner and easier to swallow, and the chick guzzles it down whole. This is incredible to watch, and it seems like a light bulb moment for Mr. Kes, and he heads out for more. He comes back in with purpose. sets the mouse down and starts tearing it up for the chicks. It's absolutely magic. Against all the odds, this male kestrel has learnt how to feed his chicks. They've still got a long way to go, but with Mr. Kez to care for them, I think these chicks have got a good chance of survival. This is the last time I saw Mrs. Kez three days ago, and I would normally see her every day, even outside the breeding season. So something must have happened to her, and it just doesn't look like she's gonna come back now. This is Mr. Kez, a male kestrel, defying the odds to care for his chicks. Male kestrels are the hunters of the family. But Mr. Kaz has done the impossible, learning to tidbit feed them too. But with his duties split between hunting and feeding, he's got a tough job. 
Mr. Kez is doing really well, he's feeding the chicks now, but he isn't quite feeding them enough, so I'm heading down just to give the chicks a bit extra. I'm giving him a helping hand, feeding the chicks with a few mice while he's away. This should help take the pressure off and ensure these chicks survive. Meanwhile, the three youngest chicks are doing well under my care. I'm feeding them six times a day and they're growing fast. They'll soon be ready to get back to their siblings. Under the care of Mr. Kez, and with a bit of help from me, the older chicks are developing too. Beneath their fluffy down, their flight feathers are starting to show. And the eldest even flaps its wings for the first time. The growing in strength, getting steadier on the feet. After nearly losing these chicks, it's amazing to see. Now it's time for the next step of my plan. Getting this family back together. So I've had these little kestrels with me just over a week now and they're doing really well. So it's time for them to go back into the nest and hopefully Mr. Kez will cope with them. But they're just gonna have their final feed with me. And it's incredible how they've grown, look at them. The smallest one is still little, but it's uh, really sort of growing and doing well. Yeah, I think we're filling them up again. So I've been feeding these kestrels about six or seven times a day, and uh, that's then now full again for another feed. So I keep my contact to a minimum with the kestrels, so I don't want them getting too used to me. They're going to go into the nest box in a few minutes, and uh, we've just got to wish them well now. But they're going to be back in with a male kestrel, and it's going to be really interesting to see how they get on there. They've got the competition of the bigger chicks in the nest, and we've just got to hope they all uh, do well, all six chicks. So it's time to get these kestrels back in the nest where they belong and I'm sure this plan's going to work and I'm just delighted we've got this far with them. It's going to be interesting to see what the other chicks make of it all. Alright then, little one first. Good sign and noisy when you pick them up. Right. There you go. <laughs> Doesn't want to leave. one. There we go. All right then, well good luck. Another one in. They're feeling a really good weight. And nice and chatty, which is a good sign. There we go, there's the last one. All right then, we've just got to wish these little guys luck. But I'm sure the plan's going to work with Mr. Kez in charge. There we go, last one in. All right, last thing to do is just to pop a few mice in the entrance. So Mr. Kez has got a bit of extra food. All right, we're gonna leave them to it. Look at that, I can see them on the live camera just underneath the nest now. And it's incredible to see all six chicks back together the youngest chicks seem intrigued to be back home. But the older three hide in the corner. They seem a bit stunned by the siblings' return. It's not long before they all settle down together. But there's still an important reunion ahead.
An hour later, Mr. Kez is back and he heads straight in to feed. He's so focused on his role, I'm not sure if he's noticed the additions to the nest. He gets to work, feeding the brood with a vole he's caught. Mr. Kez is taking it all in his stride. And it's just incredible to have all these chicks back together. Mr. Kez is working hard. Bringing in prey. And tip at feeding them too. Ensuring each chick gets their share. So the male cashel's had all six chicks for about a day now, so I'm gonna nip down and see how they're getting on. And some of them might be hungry, so I'm just gonna top them up with food. Right, so I've just opened up the back of the nest box and they're all looking remarkably well. Just doing amazingly well. It's just a little two that need topping up with food and a lot of chatter from them. When Mrs. Kess first disappeared, I was really unsure about the future of these young birds here, but I know now they're going to be brought up as wild kestrels. This is turning into a real success story, but I'm leaving nothing to chance. With my cameras in the nest box, I keep a close eye on their progress. They can now feed themselves. They're becoming more inquisitive. And they're growing fast. They nearly fill the nest as they spread out to sleep. Now at three weeks old, the feathers are developing too. Believe it or not, in just a week, they'll be ready to leave the nest. And with fledging day fast approaching, it's time for them to get their ID rings. So I've made this trip many times over the last few weeks, heading up there to feed these kestrels, but today's different. Today's ringing day. So we're gonna be putting identification rings on these chicks. And I'm gonna do three at once, just in case the male comes back, he's still got chicks in there. Right, so look at these kestrel chicks. There's the little one. So there's a lot of chatter as usual with kestrels, but this is the smallest of the chicks. And it's just incredible how they've grown. They're doing really well, but I'm just gonna take three down at once. And this is one of my rescue chicks as well. One of the ones I had for a week. That's the other rescue chick at the back there. Come on. All right then, you can go in the back. And the older chicks are safe in the nest if Mr. Kez returns. All right, Jean, I can't wait to show you these ones. Oh, my God. Jean Thorpe runs a local wildlife rescue center and she's a licensed bird ringer too. Here we go, this is the smallest one. Oh, that's something fab. And I feel how chubby it is now. This one nearly died, this one. Ah, you are a bit lush. Give me a leg. Right. Jean fits the chick with a lightweight metal ring, perfectly sized to fit for life. Are we weighing? Yeah, definitely. Each chick is weighed to provide the BTO with data on kestrel chick development. <laughs> so this is the next youngest chick, and look at this one, super little kestrel. You're yeah, the next one to have your ring on. Yeah, 
is a third chick. I've been in a really, really good way this one. So these are BTO rings that we're fishing on these kestrels, and they've all got individual numbers. And this goes into a national database, so these kestrels can be tracked in the future. We know how old they are, we know where they've come from, we know how far they've travelled. So this is really important research for these birds. Right, that's three down and three to go. So it's time to get the other three out now and put these ones back in the nest. Now these next three are going to be a little harder to handle. They're a bit bigger and much wilder than these ones. I'm just going to swap them around one at a time. This is a little chick going back in and I'm particularly fond of this one because we nearly lost it and I brought it around from the brink. Right, I've got the other three in here. After a tough start in life, it's amazing to see all six chicks so healthy. Good way to go. Mm, yeah, fit. really pleased. He's doing well Mr. Kurt on his own with a bit of help from me. It's a bit remarkable he's done it, don't you think? Yeah, you know what I mean, to magic. stick with it. The older chicks are ringed and weighed, one after the other. Good. So that's 260. So this bag's really handy because it's got a separate compartment for each kestrel. And that means they don't grab each other. Yes, these are uh, just over three weeks now. And believe it or not, you know, they're going to be flaking in the next week. It won't be long, will it? Good legs on this one, look at those. That's uh, 275 grams. Superb. Good. Alright, that's got all six Good. chicks done. Yeah, they were smashing, weren't they? Yeah, getting back in the nest. And uh, it's so nice to see they're all doing well, isn't it? Grand. Right, I'll get these Kestrel chicks back into their nest. And unbelievably, they're going to fledge in about a week. But I'm just going to pop these ones back in for now. And there's number six going in. All back where they're supposed to be. Absolutely superb. After a tough start in life, these young kestrels are thriving. When the chicks were just over a week old, their mother disappeared. But incredibly, the father, Mr. Kez, has managed to bring them up on his own. With a bit of help from me. Now at three weeks old, they're nearly ready for their next adventure, fledging. Fledging is when a young bird takes his first flight and leaves the nest. And the signs are good. They're full of energy as they stretch and flap their growing wings. Even the youngest chick is bouncing around and practicing hunting. The next step is taking a look at the outside world. One of the chicks jumps up. sits at the entrance for the very first time. The father, Mr. Kez, is so dedicated to his chicks and as they prepare to fly, he's doubling his efforts. This chick seems so overwhelmed by the outside world that it drops the vole out of the entrance. Thankfully, Mr. Kez makes regular deliveries. And when he's away, I'm close by to lend a hand too. The Kestrel chicks are almost a month old and nearly ready to fledge, so I'm heading in now to give them the last feed.
snowing. This is quite incredible how far these little kestrels have come from those tiny little chicks a few weeks ago into these amazing creatures, ready to take to the wing. Even though they're looking really similar now, I can still tell which were the three I had in for a week, and it's these three at the front. These three were in a critical condition after the mother disappeared, so I'm still keeping a close eye on them. So that's the little one I'm just feeding now. That was the one that nearly died. And it's the one that's just got a little bit of down still left on it. So this is quite an emotional moment. I'm gonna close up the back of this nest. And the next time I see these kestrels, they could actually be flying on the wing. It's now the start of June, and as dawn breaks, one of the older chicks clambers to the entrance. And another joins it to take in the sunrise. They scuffle in the entrance. It looks like this one might be ready. It looks around, working out which way to go. And within moments, it takes its very first flight. At just over a month old, the first chick has fledged the nest. The first kestrel chick fledged this morning, so I'm going to try and catch up with it and see how it's doing. It's common to find fledglings close to the nest. So I'm hoping to spot it perched on one of these sycamore branches. But this fledgling hasn't had a perfect landing. I was expecting to find this kestrel chick up in the trees, but it's just down there in the wet grass. So this one might need a helping hand. This one's feathers are wet through. It's not going to fly in this condition, but it feels a really good weight. So these feathers are going to dry out really quickly once it's out of the wet grass, and then it'll be able to fly again. I'm going to pop it up on a branch right next to the nest, and hopefully it'll settle there. The chick seems happy, perched on the branch. I'm keen to see what it does next, so I'll get into position with my camera. Its feathers dry out quickly, and it's on the move. I watch as it works its way up the tree. finally reaching a perch that it's happy with. It's just fabulous to see our first chick out in the wild. Once fledged, the chicks will hang out near the nest and be provided for by Mr. Kez. There's two days between the eldest and youngest, so they won't all fledge at once. It could be a while before they're all out and about. So in the morning, I'm watching closely to see who will be the next to go. Now the first chick has fledged, the others want to take flight too. Inside, they practice their flapping technique, getting ready for that all-important first flight. They're hopping around the nest and testing their talents. They're on the road to independence now. Within a month, they'll have to fend for themselves. All this activity is tiring work, but I'm sure they'll be raring to go tomorrow. But in the morning, they're sleeping in. And they barely stir as Mr. Kez arrives with breakfast. But 
is soon full of energy again. Just after 9am, one of the young kestrels comes to the entrance. Has a good scratch. And decides it's time to fledge too. The branch outside seems the perfect distance for a first flight. And once it's found its balance, it flies up into the trees. It's a successful fledge. Back of the nest, the other chicks are itching to take off. In the entrance, they're looking longingly. And inside, they're climbing the walls. In the late afternoon, a chick ventures to the edge. The others call excitedly. Egged on by its siblings, the third kestrel takes to the wing. Not the most elegant landing, it still has a lot to learn. But this one makes it into the trees on its own. And as the day comes to an end, there's only three chicks left. So these are the three youngest chicks that I had in with me. So it's no surprise these are the last ones to go. And I can't wait for tomorrow to see how they get on. The next day, one of the chicks wastes no time heading outside. He spends the morning preening and flapping. And just after midday, we have our fourth fledging. My first rescue chick has taken flight, and now only the smallest two are left to go. Mr. Kez is trying to tempt the final chicks from the nest, and hasn't delivered food for two days now. But these two don't seem quite ready to go. Meanwhile, the fledglings are out far, roosting in the trees. And the following afternoon, the chicks get a visit from one of them. The fledgling has a brief look inside. Before being knocked from the entrance. just in time to grab some food from Mr. Kez, who's feeding nearby. This visit seems to have motivated one of the chicks. Only an hour later, the fifth kestrel takes flight. Now, only the youngest remains. But it's not alone for long. One of the fledglings drops in to spend the night. The youngest chick seems pleasantly surprised by the visitor. two soon settle in together. The youngest chick hasn't been fed for a couple of days, so I'm just going to head down and give it a bit of extra food. This youngest chick is the one that nearly died, and it's looking a bit thin. So over the next couple of days, I feed it back up to strength. Mm. 
it's much more energetic now. Head bobbing, stretching, and even flapping its wings. And the following day, a week after the first chick fledged, it's finally time. Just after dawn, the last chick takes to the skies. This has been a truly unique story. I followed this Kestrel family all year, witnessing every moment as the pair chose their nest, laid a clutch of eggs, and welcomed six healthy chicks. Tragedy struck when Mrs. Kez disappeared and three chicks were taken into my care. Sadly, Mrs. Kez never returned, but Mr. Kez stepped up, defying all the textbooks as he learned to feed his family. And eventually they could be reunited. Mr. Kez has worked so hard to care for his chicks. with a bit of help from me. Despite a challenging start, all six chicks are fledged. What a success story. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to see more. Here's a taste of what you'll enjoy seeing on this channel.